I got my platform shoes on too. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. I'm Connor O'Reilly, and we're here at the Champions Cup presented by Bushnell with special guest Jakub Simarad. What up? Jakub also plays for Latitude 64 and has had two awesome finishes the last two weekends, so excited to play this wooded course with him. What do you think about the track? I love it. It's my first time here, actually, and yeah. it's probably already my favorite course. Yeah, definitely one of the favorites among most of the pros on the tour, so excited to show you guys this course. Hole one at w WR Jackson is a 660 foot par four. You got a dual option fairway. Choose the right side if you like that hyzer release or play down the left side if you want to get a little more distance and maybe play a flex. You could go mid range or driver down that left side. So kind of pick your poison, how much distance you want to get. Second shot, you have some variety into the green as well. All right, I'm gonna play explorer on hole one because I can kind of find a rhythm for the rest of the course and Jakub's going a little more aggressive. Yeah, I'm going right side with my orbit enforcer. Are you going left side? I'm going right side as well. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Going super right side. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Money spot. Good shot. All right, I'm already scrambling, but from the fairway, so I guess it is a scramble. Stay straight. Ah, that'll do. Yeah, got options. Something really nice about WR Jackson is we have. These kind of tethers on the trees letting us know the distance. This one that I believe is a 300 marker. So helps with pace of play to not have to look at your range finder and be able to just check out the hole marker. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna play my pure little under nine or a little under 300 feet, 900 feet. That's a big one. that yeah there we go slid up there for a par save Jakub's well in the fairway though so he's looking at that birdie so I ended up on the left side but it's good because now I have options I can go left side with forehand or backhand right side and I think I'm gonna throw moonshine harp backhand right side Oh yeah, yeah. All right, I gotta save par. Jakub's got a nice birdie look. Definitely a hole that par feels like a mistake. Pretty generous starting hole. Yep. Good what start. are you putting with Jakub? Let the people know. Yeah, I'm putting with the uh, Orbit Hopes with my stamp on it. It's a putting world champion stamp from last year. Pretty good putter. Oh yeah. So hole two at w WR Jackson, par three, 390 feet. Most people are gonna throw like a straight fairway driver, little flip up, right side. It should be easy birdie and yeah. I'm throwing a Hybrid X getaway, pretty overstable nine speed fairway driver. Just hit it hard and straight, and it's gonna fade out. Nice and low, gets the ground play. Yeah. Circle one. Shouldn't be oh, yeah. circle one. I feel like I've noticed you really kind of built your game off of just throwing flat yeah. most of the time and kind of using the disc yeah, for that. Yeah. Is there any reason that you prefer that? or? I think it's very consistent. Yeah. And that's why I like it. I like it. That's good. 
I'm gonna go Opto X Explorer. I'm just trying to put just a touch of hyzer on it and let it push pretty straight. A little wider than I wanted, but yeah, snuck shouldn't. up there into the circle. Yeah, there's that easy birdie Yakub was talking about. Definitely a hole. If you hit that first gap, you're expecting to give yourself at least a putt. There we go, Yakub's two through two. I'm one through two. <laughs> All right, we grabbed a classic line frame right there. Two birdies on hole two. And the third is a par four, very beautiful hole and super unique. You gotta really throw it up in the air with the backhand and have it pan right for the second half of the flight to get to the ideal landing zone. The forehand can also get you to a shorter landing zone where you have a longer way into the basket. Second shot's most likely gonna be, have to be some kind of hyzer depending on the height you wanna go for and you need to get a little bit of ground play to get into circle one here. I like my beat up explorer off the tee, but it's Jakub's tee so he'll show you what he's throwing. I'm gonna go with my understable grace, just throw it straight and high and it's gonna turn right. Yeah, yeah, that looked great. It should be nice. All right, I'm going slightly slower disc. I don't actually bag the grace, so this beat up Explorer is a good option for me when I need it to hold right for the second half of the flight. Oh, get off the tree. I overturned it a little bit and I kicked right into the woods, so I'm gonna have a bit of a scramble. All right, I found a pretty tricky spot over here. I feel like my best chance at a possible birdie is like flick roller with my hatchet. So see if we can pull off a miracle. Not quite. So I'm pretty much on the perfect landing zone. I have two options. I can go a little inside with like a mid range or outside with a fairway driver with a ground play. I don't think I'm gonna go anchor with the left gap. Ooh, straight at it. I like it. Oh. A little double kick, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got about 200 feet. Got to go to the turnaround stance. Oh. Yeah, not going to do it. Long, long putt for par. All right, looks like I'm still out by about a disc on Yakub, so long par putt. Nope, not enough turn. So after hitting the tree, I still have a long chance for birdie. Oh, uh, almost. Thought he did it. Little tester for par. Oh yeah. All day. With authority. <laughs> I goofed around and took a took a bogey here, but definitely a hard birdie to grab here on hole three. And I probably should have just pitched out, try to take my par. So after three holes, I'm two under, Connor is even. Hole four is a par three, 100 meters, 327 feet. The main goal is to hit the initial gap with something slow. I'm gonna go with anchor. And there is a lot of trees on the green, so you need to be a little bit lucky at the end, but you should be able to have a putt pretty much every time. One, 
Missed it. That's so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I think you can either go mid-range or fairway, depending on what you want to do here. Even like overstable putter if you really want to throw it hard, but I like the Pioneer. Just hit the gap and let it skip over there. Yeah, man, I keep waiting to get that one, but. <laughs> oh, almost. Man, without that tree, you made it, huh? Yakub showing why he's the current putting world champ, lethal, even from the crap. Nice work. And I'm able to grab a little stroke back on him. Maybe I'm gonna change my plans and go with a fairway driver. Yeah, I think this one has a lot of options, but like you said, the way that you do kind of have to skip back left at the end, I feel like it's good to have that sharp disc. Yeah, just... yeah, yeah. Last year, I was the first player in the entire tournament to step foot on hole five, a very beautiful and challenging gauntlet of a hole here. And we had a rec tech grill sitting there waiting for someone to win with a CTP challenge. I threw my flip up Explorer shot, slid it up, hit the pole and sat about 18 inches or so from the basket and all weekend that shot held as the best shot in the hole with 400 of the best or 400 throws from the best 100 players in the world going up against it so it was pretty cool to take home that rec tech last year on this hole so i always get those good vibes stepping up the hole five it's 432 feet and there's only one way about it you got to fly straight uh pick your stability whether you kind of like to hit something flat and let it ride over and fight or whether you want to kind of hyzer stand something up you really just got to fly clean for at least three seconds here to feel good like you'll have a for sure par but if you hit something early watch out the explorer i threw here last year is a little too understable for that shot now so i'm busting out this metal flake explorer shout out to sunny you if you're out there watching this hooked me up with these a couple years ago oh that was a great second kick, bringing me back to the promised land. I hit a little early there. And I'm gonna throw the second option that Connor was talking about. Stable disc, honor, flat, and hopefully hit the gap. Love it. Wow, Jakub said, that's my CTP, come on. Oh, oh my goodness. That's <laughs> yeah. pretty good. <laughs> That's a great shot. Thank you. Let's go. All right, I got about 130 out. I'm going to try to give it a soft bid just because Jakub's parked and got to put some pressure on my guy. Nope. That'll do for par though. Jakub was tired of hearing me talk about parking the shot for a grill so he's like i'm gonna park it and i'm not gonna get a grill but <laughs> i think i i would have a chance with this shot? i think that could have a chance yeah i think you at least feel you feel like you have a chance there enough to get your hope up but i don't know yeah but yeah mine last year was like <laughs> i finished like there that's pretty good because yeah. it like slid it up hit and like <laughs> So after five holes, I'm three down, Connor is one down. Hole six is a par three, 366 feet. We have two fairways here, but I think most people is gonna take the right fairway. You need to throw something with a back end, something with a hyzer, but still a little flippy because you need to push forward to get the distance. And yeah, that's it. Um, Throwing again my honor. Miss that. Ooh, pushes oh, that back that side, was but that, yeah, very lucky. Good. Yeah, like Jakub said, this one you feel like you could throw something over stable, but it just doesn't quite get there. You really need to push up off that hyzer. And so I like my most beat in rive for this shot. Oh, 
I was a little high, but I think I should have like a 40, 45 footer. All right, I've got probably about 55 feet up the hill. Just played it too high off the tee. I have a little frame here though. Oh, I was pretty lucky because I went through the on the right side and ended up in the circle, which is a great result on this hole. And now I have like 30 feet putt for the birdie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this one definitely feels like kind of a more of a bonus get for the part yeah, threes yeah. on this course. It's it's pretty tough to get there. So good on Yakub picking that one up with the good putt. Hole seven's a par four at 744 feet. Very specific tee shot. You've got to move this one on hyzer, but you can't just fade dump out left and you cannot push the back wall. You have to be flipping up on that hyzer and kind of penetrating straight. A similar version to the same shot we just threw there, but this one plays slightly downhill. Second shot is kind of going to, going to be a scramble depending on where you're at, but if you're in the perfect zone, there is a hyzer that will get you to the basket. I'm going to go honor and Jakub's going to go hybrid eggs getaway. Uh, getaway, a little straighter. But my honor is a little more beaten than his probably, so. Yeah, this is more <laughs> stable than that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> That's too too early. Ooh. Very early. Maybe he should have thrown the honor like me. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> that looks nice. Yeah, a little left. We'll see if it gets a straight skip or not. But. Yeah, I was pretty lucky with my drive because I was very early and hit the trees. But still, I had a kick, so I'm still on the fairway. I can maybe still put it on the green. Unfortunately, our microphone just died, so we're going to be running it with the camera mic the rest of the time. So hopefully the audio is all right. I got like 320 feet in going Pioneer. Come on, Faith. Oh, oh I caught the last, last, last guardian tree, but I think I have a circle one's edge putt still. Yeah. So. I've been trying to work on going to a, a straddle putt when I have those steep upslopes because the stagger just hasn't been working for me. Nice birdie there. Save the bar. So hole eight is a par four, 645 feet. You can go backhand and hyzer or forehand hyzer. But I, I don't like backhand because if you're gonna hit the tree, you're gonna have a kick to the left side. So I'm gonna throw my overstable enforcer and hopefully stay on the fairway. Yeah, sometimes it's important to understand the way the disc spins backhand versus forehand and the way it's gonna wanna kick here, like Jakub said. It'll go way down to the left there. And you almost have to fade like backwards on the backhand. So it's very, very touchy. I like my Pioneer on the forehand. inside and cut a tree. Gonna be a scramble from there. Beat it. Yeah, similar line, just pushes it a little flatter and that should be a money spot. Yeah. 
All right, I'm in a pretty bad spot over here. I've got like, kind of, I can pitch a forehand up to just uh, settle for par, but I don't like that option, so I can always lay up in the tournament. I'm gonna see if I can do anything tricky with the hatchet here. That's what you get, trick sleeve work. I'm basically on the money spot. I have some options, I can go forehand flex or Beckenheiser. There is just one tree in the middle that I have to beat. And if I'm gonna beat it, I'm gonna be putting. So I, I think I'm gonna go forehand flex with my Achti. Yeah, Yakub probably couldn't even see that tree. He put a good line on it. Did you choose forehand because of the uphill run up or yeah. what was it? Yeah. yeah. All right, I've got about 200 feet uh, gentle turnover line. I'm gonna take my beat up bait. Oh, missed my line by a mile there. That's what I get. That's twice in a row I've tried to do too much with a flippy disc out of the woods instead of pitching out. But I'm just learning my lessons for tomorrow, so. Unfortunately, I hit the tree light, but I still have a long look for birdie. I like my understable pure for this kind of putts because it goes super far and straight. I think Yakub had a couple great teaching moments for you guys there. Not only to have a super understable putter, almost too understable to throw in the bag for those long straight putts, but also when you're when you're trying to generate force up a hill, it can be a lot easier to throw the forehand because you're running straight at it, whereas the backhand, you're coming and you're pivoting around this point. While your momentum is trying to come up a hill, it can be a lot harder than just coming straight into that point. So make sure to have forehand and backhand in your game. Don't be a dummy like me and try to do too much because I've done that twice and now I've taken my second bogey because of it. We're rounding out the front nine with another par four. This one's one of the shorter ones on the course, but really got to be specific off the tee to access the landing zone to attack for birdie. It's kind of a fake right side gap here. Most players are going to take the left side with a backhand that's turning for part of the flight and fighting out. You can go fairway or distance driver, depending on how aggressive you want to get here. And I see Yakub's going with that enforcer again. Oh yeah. That thing is smoked, you guys. Wow. <laughs> Good shot. I'm gonna go a little more controlled with my honor, but looking for a similar flight there. Oh, I just love that big pine tree. That's three days in a row I've hit it. I'll beat it tomorrow. All right, found myself off on this cluster of stuff to the right. Not a good spot. I feel like a, a fat guy in a little coat when I'm in the woods like that. I just, I'm scared to swing my arms, you know? <laughs> I got flex forehand with the justice left. I'm shanking shots, y'all. I 
Yes, I threw that one perfect. <laughs> yeah, Connor just said that this is the best drive that he has ever seen, and it's like just under 200 feet. I'm gonna go right side, back end with my uh, understable harp. I was about to say, that's not understable, that's a suck about playing. <laughs> Oh, of course said now. You threw a good enough drive, Jakub. We're giving it to you. Come on. <laughs> All right, I need a miracle throw in for par here. Oh, the trees almost gave me the love I needed. Even with a better approach, I was lucky to hit the tree and ended up in the circle. gonna putt aggressive you gotta be willing to face some comebackers and knock them down like Jakub just did. Yeah. Is there anything that kind of influenced your flat putting style like a certain player or just uh, certain conditions or whatever? Actually I it's very windy during the winter in Czech Republic so that's maybe the reason yeah. why I putt so hard. Yeah in the wind putting hard and flat the way Jakub does I figured that was probably what did it for him because there's not a lot of players who putt the same way he does so. Hole 10 Part four, 600 feet. Uh, it bends a little bit to the right and then it goes straight. So I'm just gonna throw a uh, straight thrust, throw it hard and it's gonna turn a little bit and hopefully end up in the middle of the fairway. Oh, yeah. That one looks yeah, great. It should be perfect. In the past, I've been going to explore here, but I think I finally realized that I need to go with the mid-range as well, just to make it a little easier to hit a number of angles successfully. I'm going with my gold line compass. Shout out to Throw Joe's. Oh, it's so straight. You're a hyzer? I haven't made that disc move less in so long. <laughs> oh God. Spending a little too much time with the spiders and ticks today, but that's what practice is for, right? Made love the fairway. I'll take it. This is pretty much the perfect shot with the thrust. I have like maybe 220 feet to the basket. I'm gonna go slammer with a little any. Jakub was putting on a clinic, you guys. Oh, a little jumpy. Still a Esther. All right, right here at the 150 marker. I'm gonna go Faith on the back end. There we go. We'll start the back now with the par. Another great putt for Jakub in the heart of the chain. Starting big time with a birdie. Jakub's putting on a clinic right now, you guys. He's showing me how to play WR Jackson. And I needed a little tune-up, so thanks, Jakub. Hole 11 is a ton of fun to throw. At 420 feet, this par three is definitely on the longer range for this course. Might be the longest one, actually. Big backhand turnover is a great line on this one. If you have the power for the forehand, it's there as well. But I feel like the way this one needs to move so far to the right, the backhand works a little better. I'm going beat up Explorer. And I think Jakub told me yesterday he's doing the same. I'm sure he's going to put it under the basket like he has been all day. So, Yeah, like Connor said, old Explorer, Ricky Weissoki, signature series 
like four years old or something. That's not enough. It's a little too high. If you see me play, you know I love this disc. It just doesn't get to come out very much when we play in the open most of the time. So when I get to a course like WR and I get to throw it, I get very excited. Put it up on a little bit of turn, just let it drift. Yeah, a little overturn there and I caught one of the right side trees. Should be a long putt. All right, we got the F field basket kind of playing defense here, but I got a long outside chance on this one. Not quite. Not even close, actually. I threw my Explorer a little bit too high, but still have a chance for a long birdie. careful on these practice baskets they have out here. During the tournament, they'll move to one basket from both positions, but I've noticed these chains are a little, a little flimsy. So I'm sure Jakub's noticed with his pace on his foot. Yeah. <laughs> Hole 12, part five, just under a thousand feet. Very eagleable, but uh, I'm going with more conservative play with the honor, just to make sure to stay on the fairway and take easy birdie. Oh yeah, beat the tree. Yeah, it's gonna be a great spot. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, I'm playing honor as well. I really like the way that Jakub threw that. So try to match his line. Oh, I think I caught the base of one of those trees that you kind of have to filter through. But it should still be a birdieable position. This might take the eagle off the table. Yeah. All right, I kicked off to the right through these trees and I have the left side window that you'll see a lot of players take if they're going for the eagle. Um, but I'm pretty much forced down it right now. I'm gonna go explore though, so I don't get too greedy. Just try to emphasize staying in the fairway. Perfect. Yeah, that was just what I was looking for. Landed flat, kind of skittered up. Should be a birdie from there. So after a good drive, I'm almost on the perfect uh, landing zone for an eagle. I have 460 feet. I think in the tournament I would go for a safe birdie down the right side, but now I'm gonna try to make an eagle with the understable getaway. And he's got some strokes to play with you guys, so <laughs> he's doing this for y'all. Flies clean, and he's oh my gosh! He I just think it's parked the it. Oh my god, <laughs> that was sick! All right, since Jakub is bullseyed for eagle, I'm gonna try to give this one a long chip in with the sake bomb slammer. Normally, I might just go easy backhand here to take my birdie. Follow over. Do it. Oh. oh, nice bit. Bullseye for eagle. That's about as easy as the eagle will get out here all weekend. He went nine speed, nine speed, showing you guys, even though the hole is pretty long, it helps to just control the end of your flight and maybe take a little bit of distance off, but yeah, rewards accuracy. 
Hole 13 is a very specific par three. You gotta gently move the disc to the right for the last two thirds of your flight. You can play a pretty straight shot that gradually moves to get a long look, but the big flip up forehand seems to be the best line for this one if you're not gonna just throw that backhand to circle's edge left. I like my beat and arrive here, but it's Jakub's box and she just got the big bird. Yeah, I'm still not sure if I'm gonna throw forehand or roller. I think it's gonna, I'm gonna decide based on the feeling in the round. But right now I'm gonna try roller with my havoc. Just, uh, just hit the tree light, but it's still a chance for birdie. I'm going with the flip up forehand with my rive. Try to make sure I keep it nice and low. Oh yeah, a bit too much hyzer caught the inside. Straight kip kicked. I uh, should be hanging out near Jakub. Oh, not quite, not quite. Got to push it a little straighter up the tee. I, gotta, I need to make sure I key in on... We'd rather be too straight than too inside on this one, so... Oh my gosh. Almost. I need to say something for... For the tournament, save something for yeah. the tournament. <laughs> save something. Like it. Yeah, Kub was feeling nice, so he just teased the make on that one to excite you guys, but to keep my heart feeling okay because he's now only still beating me by six. So hole 13, par four, 736 feet. It used to be a par five, but now it's a par four because I think there is gonna be a better pace in the round with this tee pad. We have this gap, I'm gonna throw my rife as hard as I can and hopefully have a chance for birdie. I'll be back in birdie. Love it. So, I reckon. Right, dude. It is. Yeah, who's making me reconsider all my disc selections out here? <laughs> what a shot. Great shot, Yaku. I'm gonna play Explorer, a little bit of Heiser, just have it stand up. Back door. Yes. Oh, full oh, back door. Oh, oh. Did you see that tree touch? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, wow. you could, like the thing is you committed. <laughs> yeah, I did. Like, you, like, full commit. That's what, I mean, that's what you it's have to crowd, do out guys. here. Tough, tough crowd, guys. Tough crowd here. Commit. As we, as we say in Florida, you got to respect it. Yeah. A lot of this you have to respect, whether it's giving it a little more hyzer or slamming on it. If you don't, I'll we'll show you. That's, Some respect. That's so Couldn't... Halo Dynasty. Right. Nice. James gets the no gas. Like James gets the gas. All gas, no break. Only goal is to throw it one foot past Jakobs. No Ooh. chance. No, it's too low. Can we take a better ground play? Ooh. Oh, he did gap it. I think Jakob still got me. Yeah. <laughs> He's thrown a couple drives today. They're the best drive I've seen on the whole time. <laughs> right, I got forehand in going Pioneer. What's up, strong guy? Wow, you smoked that. Circle two look. Two overcommitted gaps there. That's right. <laughs> After a perfect tee shot, I have a little approach. I think I'm gonna go back end and hyzer with my understable harp. Does it get tiring saying perfect up, up uh, drive on every shot? Never. <laughs> He's never tired of it. Is it early enough? Come on. It Come is. On it is. Oh, it's okay. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's right. All right, I got like a trick shot, hyzer putt gap. I want to try to make this. Battle 
the gauntlet. Oh, oh so close. Good day, dude. Thank you. That's, I want Little that. stepper oh, left for the that. birdie. Every time. Every time. Oh, shot out off the mark. 14 is going to be a tough birdie to grab for sure. I got to take par. I got a little fortunate off the gap there. Can't be too mad. No way. Oh. Hole 15 is a 714 foot par four. You really got to drag this one from the left to the right off the tee here. And it's a very tricky approach as you do not have sight of the basket most of the time. You kind of have to just float it down the hill, creek long with some bad putts. So really good, feel good birdie here. Yeah, cool. We got it. Who's going to get away? I'm going slightly understable to get away with a Enheiser of my hand. Hopefully I'm going to end up on the sweet spot. Yeah, I'm going with that Ricky two-time explorer again. Just a little bit of drag on it. That was probably past the ditch. Felt overturned, but I think it might have worked out for me. Let's see. I hit the trees early, but I still have uh, this backdoor gap, and it's like 400 feet to the basket. Still a chance for a birdie. Well, actually, I'm gonna go mid range back in. Again. I found myself in this ditch that you're looking to clear off the tee, but I have a flex forehand right around 380 feet to go. Nope. Too much turn. All right, I got a couple tricky options coming into this down sloping green. I'm just gonna kind of play it wide on some turn and help to filter through the trees. Beat that one. Oh my gosh. Off by inches and off by feet out here makes a big difference. So I'm coming back this afternoon to dial it in you guys. like 50 feet to the basket that putt in the tournament I would probably lay up but now I'm gonna run it almost Yeah, like Jakuba said, you don't really need to run long birdie putts on this one unless it's like final round and you're trying to make up strokes because it can be hard to run this one and go long into that creek and have to deal with the footing, so. Hole 16, par three, just under 300 feet. Uh, this hole feels almost like a must get on this course. Uh, there is an OB on the right side. That's the only thing that you have to avoid on this one and I'm gonna throw flex line with my moonshine harp. Nice. Should be like circle's edge. All right, we're going opposite ends of the spectrum here. He's going over stable, fight out. I'm going with the fuse, just trying to hit it flat and let it kind of pull itself to the right. Oh, too 
straight. Well, if I don't make a long one, this will be the first time in six throws that I have not birdied this hole, so. twice in a row from C2, but if you do, you do want to make the second one. Unfortunate having to settle for par for both of us here. We're definitely looking to birdie it tomorrow. At 544 feet, hole 17 might be the shortest par four on the course, but it also has the most narrow gap off the tee. You really got to push it straight for the entire flight. Maybe have it even drift a little bit to the right and get onto that far slope. You can see some players take some crazy creative lines trying to just cut the corner here, but I think just going down the gap is probably your best option and taking some kind of scramble from there. So my go main goal is to hit the gap, but I'm still going with my drive because I feel comfortable throwing my drive full power. And hopefully I'm going to end up on the sweet spot. That's definitely not a sweet spot. That's the door of opportunity I need to maybe make one stroke up. But I got a lot of work to do though, so. Going explore, just trying to hit the gap. Oh my gosh. Wow. I got the discount double kick luckily, so. Still got some fairway to work with. Yeah, I, I hit the first available. There is almost nothing, but I'm gonna throw try to throw a forehand roller with my Atti. All right, I too am looking for some kind of miracle forehand roller. <laughs> I didn't even take that into calculation. Is that you, Jeff? <laughs> I didn't do anything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't do anything. It's not happening. Hello, I'll, lady. I'll try to go for crazy safe with a grace. I think in the tournament I would just lay up uh, on the top of the hill with the mid range, but now I'm gonna try to save a bar. Maybe a long putt from there. Yeah. I still need to scramble for my bogey. I'm gonna throw foreign roller with my harp. This is one of those turning putts that you might not run, but in practice, everything's on the table. Not flat enough. for the card here. Yeah. After a tough hole 17, uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm minus five and Connor is minus plus one. Um, hole 18 is a very tough yeah, hole. 18. It's maybe the hardest birdie on the course. It's a par four, 734 feet. You have to be very aggressive to, have, to get a birdie. So I'm gonna throw my rife and Try to get a birdie. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, I feel like you can go fairway driver just to play for par here and keep it in the middle, but it feels like you need a distance driver to get a birdie. Two for two kicks left. Whoa, that's really cool. I thought you had some kind of pin on your bag. <laughs> Another scramble for par. Hopefully this time I can get it. All right, two tee shots in a row. We've been reduced to forehand roller scrambles, so obviously didn't quite execute what we're looking for. And I hit the same spot as Jakub, but who knows where it'll finish. Okay, stay in the fairway. All right, we have a new finish here for 18. It plays out to the left this year, kind of arena style with the stands out there. Out of bounds surrounding. 300 in, gonna go with my trust. Thank you, thank you. Another tight gap to hit for setting my par. Playing Pioneer, Beckenheiser. Heiser. It's way safer than the way it was. Ooh. To finish with pride. Uh, they came down here for a uh, summit or something, but uh, a little while ago. Oh. Not gonna do it. Showing its teeth, gonna be a tough finisher. Two amazing shots to score a birdie. All right, well, Jakub just showed you guys and myself how to play WR Jackson. Super excited for the first major of the year here at Champions Cup. It's all about patience, putting down good, good scores and not doing too much in those early rounds, riding the hot streak if you got it. But if not, just focusing on hitting that first gap and sticking to your game plan. A couple times I let his shot selection kind of change what I want to do so I got to make sure I, I really buckle in the, the shots I want to throw and just stick to that don't let a card mate influence me but yeah. it was a lot of fun having you on Jakub thanks yeah, for joining yeah. us thank you for having me it was a pleasure to be on your uh, channel and yeah, yeah we're sorry for the audio issues it would have been nice to have the mics work the whole time but we're gonna get some fresh batteries in and maybe next time we get Jakub on we can find a fun way to do a bag swap or something like yeah, that and yeah. you want to shout out your sponsors yeah, I would like to shout out Latitude and also thisgolfshop.com and also this Golf Hunters. Thank you guys. And I'd like to shout out Latitude 64 OTB discs, Lucky Ace discs on your card and Throw Joes. Super excited to once again get that first major kicked off and tell us how to say farewell and check. Uh, I have no idea what does it Goodbye. mean. Actually. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Naskledano. Naskledano. Yeah. For all you Czech Republic. YouTube goers out there, maybe one of you guys. Honestly, with Yakub though, we probably got a whole flood of people coming. So, yeah. thanks everybody for joining. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Yakub's channel as well. We're gonna put his information in the description below. See you guys. Adios. Ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs>